Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. PM Modi leads unique Yoga Day event at UN headquarters. India slams China after it blocks proposal to sanction 2611 mastermind. And Pakistan bans holy in universities to save Islamic identity, says reports. And now for all the details, in a mega show of India's soft diplomacy, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday led a unique yoga session at the UN headquarters in New York to commemorate the 9th International Day of Yoga. The event saw participation from top UN officials and envoys of various member nations. The world body had declared 21st of June as Yoga Day after adoption of an India-led resolution in 2014. In a video message before the event, PM Modi had termed yoga as a global moment. The Prime Minister earlier also met prominent American academics, health experts, scientists and business leaders including Tesla CEO Elon Musk. He was scheduled to leave for Washington later on Wednesday where he will hold bilateral meeting with President Joe Biden and address a joint session of the US Congress. India on Wednesday slammed China after it blocked a proposal in the UN to label Pakistan-based 26 Mumbai attacks mastermind Sajid Mir as global terrorist. In a sharp-worded statement, India said despite Mir being a proscribed terrorist under laws of India and the US, when the proposal to designate him as global terrorist doesn't get through, India has rightest reasons to believe that something is genuinely wrong with the global counter-terrorism architecture. Earlier in September, Beijing, an all-weather ally of Pakistan, had put a hold on proposal against Sajid Mir that would subject him to an assets freeze, travel ban and arms embargo. In the past, China, a veto-wielding permanent member of the Security Council, has blocked several proposals against Pakistan-based terrorists. But when the proposal for listing him did not go through the Security Council sanctions regime, we had strong reasons to believe that something was genuinely wrong in the global sanctions regime, as manifested in the Security Council. If we cannot get established terrorists who have been proscribed across global landscapes listed under the Security Council architecture for pure geopolitical interests, then we really do not have the genuine political will needed to sincerely fight this challenge of terrorism. The Greece migrant boat tragedy has once again put a spotlight on the crisis in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Authorities have confirmed dozens of young men from the region were on the ill-fated trawler who hoped for a better future. A report. Rows of families queued up for DNA tests in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir on Tuesday to help identify victims of the Greece migrant boat tragedy. Pakistani authorities have said there were hundreds of people from the country on the ill-fated trawler, including over four dozen people from the occupied region. The relatives of the victims decried the widespread unemployment in the area had forced their loved ones to seek a better future abroad. Locals in POK have long blamed negligence of Islamabad to develop education and health sector and other basic infrastructure that has led them to lead a life of destitution. No good factory, no good car. 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 Another person desperate for answers is Muhammad Aslam, whose 26-year-old son, Sajid, had sent him a voice message on June 8th, saying he was sitting in the ship. Greece authorities are still searching the sea for missing people, though the chance of finding more survivors is being seen as virtually nil. <laughs> Came, uh, 
Pakistan's Higher Education Commission has banned the celebration of Holi, the Hindu festival of colors, across all educational institutes in the country. News outlet Arj News has reported. The notice by the commission came after several videos of Holi celebrations in a university went viral on social media. It said that such activities are an erosion of the country's Islamic identity and advised students to refrain themselves from conducting such events. Pakistan has long been accused for discriminating against its religious minorities, which is manifested in various forms against Pakistani Hindus, Christians, Sikhs and also Ahmadiyas and Shia Muslims. Afghanistan's Supreme Court on Tuesday confirmed that the Taliban authorities carried out a second public execution on the grounds of a mosque in Lagban province since they took power in 2021. The court said that it had sentenced the man to death in accordance with Sharia law as he was found guilty of killing five people last year. The Taliban had carried out their first public execution in December 2022 when a man convicted of murder was shot by the victim's father at a crowded sports stadium in Farah province. The latest execution comes after the UN in a recent report strongly criticized public executions, lashings and stonings by Taliban and called on the country's rulers to halt such practices. The Sri Lankan Navy on Tuesday arrested at least nine Indian fishermen for allegedly poaching in the country's territorial waters. The Navy in a statement said the trawler was in the sea having experienced a mechanical failure with seepage of seawater to its engine. The trawler along with the nine Indian fishermen was handed over to the Delft police for onwards legal proceedings. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory while netting the catch and end up spending years in jails. In today's world of video calls, instant messaging and mobile phones, the police department in India's Odisha state is preserving a relic from the past, the carrier pigeons. In a nondescript building in Katak, more than 100 Belgian homing pigeons are being reared and trained to carry messages, just in case all known forms of communications fail. Messages are written on very light onion paper and inserted into a copper or plastic capsule, then tied to the pigeon's leg before they are released. This is the pigeon carrier service. We have it since 1946. And uh, this service was basically used for communicating from one station to another station. Now we have kept it as a heritage, as a ceremonial thing. The birds proved to be a communication lifeline during the 1999 Odessa cyclone. Once trained, their memory and accuracy in identifying routes and locations remains intact for years. They can fly up to 500 miles at a stretch depending on the weather. If tomorrow you want to revive it, they will be as effective as they were from the last 50 years. If tomorrow, say, you know, now the chances are very less, you know, if the, every communication breaks down, the pigeons will never fail. You know. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.